my name is Gregor Erkic, uh, and today me and Matej will walk you through to the some of the things we learned while migrating uh, clients from Microsoft SQL Server to Snowflake, what to watch out, and it will be, as Clement said, more of a technical presentation. Uh, because the background idea was that uh, on the first webinars a month ago, we focused mostly on what you need to prepare, what are the possibilities, what to watch out, but these are now more of a technical deep dives, what to watch out and what we learned and uh, to give you, let's say, a better overview. And of course, if you have any questions, just uh, start writing them and then we will address this uh, at the end of the presentation. So regarding SQL Server, this is how I started. So it was, uh, at, I think, 2000, something like that, or it was even a year before that. So uh, and also my colleague here joining me started also on the version 2000. So I call this a Microsoft Analytics tag because if you remember some of you, Olap was there first versions, uh, there was DTS, which then became integration services and so on. So Microsoft always packed these things together. So that's why we call it a stack. Um, I also worked very closely with the Microsoft team. So I was also invited to write a book on implementing a data warehouse with Microsoft. So we, I co-authored the training kit uh, book. So, but overall, so if you look at Microsoft when it comes to data warehousing, so it's uh, still by default standard relational engine. So it means there should be always some best practices how to set up uh, on the on-premise environment, uh, the data warehouse, so how to do the partitioning, how should physically the file groups align with the database so that you can get really high performance scans. So this is the idea of the data warehouse. So you don't focus on small database six because you are not care, don't care so much about the small transactions, but you care about large batch inserts and large scans to be uh, quite performant. And also Microsoft introduced the columnar story index that is, let's say, very appropriate when it comes to uh, analytics. So this is some background uh, regarding the SQL Server. So how we see, let's say, the market in these last 20 years. So uh, at least here in Eastern Europe, as I can see it, where there are a lot of smaller clients, but also we look worldwide. So the adoption rate was very high. Also, if you remember, Olap had a very high market share uh, for that part. So this combination of uh, database, of course, for the data warehouse, data integration tool and analytical engine was something that was quite favorable among clients. And also it was a very low price entry point for a majority of clients. So compared to, let's say, Oracle or IBM uh, that were mostly targeted to the enterprise segment, Microsoft very well positioned this. And through the years, it grew with capabilities. And at the end, it's hard to say that someone will say, no, Oracle is much better for enterprise data warehousing in terms of than Microsoft, because Microsoft catched up this uh, through the years. And there were some very, very large and are still very large clients uh, on-prem using Microsoft for the data warehouse part. So, uh, of course, as I said, it's standard relational engine. So there is no an appliance view. So you need a good DBA at the end to, to manage all the needs. So from partitioning, indexing, statistics, looking what is going on, uh, looking at the query plans and et cetera. So this is, let's say, a standard uh, approach when it comes to SQL Server. So for today, so we will look at, let's say, important topics when it comes to migration. So what needs in terms of code conversion, how you need to do initial load because you will have to transfer the existing things and how to do the deltas, so the incremental loads. And what is also important uh, is then, of course, is there any optimization needed, not what you need to watch out, what are the differences, so that you can better plan. So, but at the end, I would still again emphasize that the most important part is that you plan and take enough time at the beginning so that you think all things through, analyze, do maybe one prototype or another, and really spend more time on planning side and how you will do it than to just start working on it. So this is something that we addressed in previous webinars, but I have to emphasize it again.